The first day I arrived, and Della Omar greeted me himself. He had no idea who it was. I said I wanted to help, you know, build a new South Africa, and he said, "Okay, we need um, we need a proposal tomorrow because we want to do work on children's rights in the Constitution." And the tomorrow, he said, "Yes, can you write it tonight? Because we need it tomorrow for the Ford Foundation." I seriously went home, and it was the best all-nighter. You know, you do that in school. It's the best one I've ever done. I stayed up all night long. Um, he gave me some things to, to look at. We wrote, I wrote it. I came back, and um, with my floppy disk, I only had a, a computer. And he said, "Oh, get, we don't have any computers at the Community Law Center." <laughs> this is not, he said, "You'll have to sit with Sunita, dictate it to her, you know, his assistant, Sunita Dalla." And um, we did that, and that was. Um, and he, then he said, "We'll come back the next day. We don't have any funding yet for you to be here or do this work. But if you want to come tomorrow and help us, you can." I jumped at the chance. I came back that day and the next day, and about um, four weeks later, we found out we could do the work on children and women's rights. Um, I was the only American initially. Um, there were, you know, it was everyone else was, you know, working from South Africa. And um, Amy arrived shortly after I did. Um, it was, it was, you know, wonderful to have a sort of, you know, fellow American, but also someone who was uh, my same age, a contemporary, caring and talking about children's rights, women's rights. I was focusing on children. I, um, I last saw Amy in Paris in July of 1993 because we were both planning to leave South Africa and we were both quite emotional about it. She was um, going back and um, I was going back as well to work in the U.S. and we both actually didn't really want to leave what we had, you know, sort of come, come we thought for a short period, come here for a short period and it turned into sort of touched our hearts in a way that we, you know, I've certainly has been with me, I'm still here and I think Amy might be as well. That was the last time I saw her. Uh, I was in the States in August and um, got a phone call. Um, we worked very closely with the uh, journalists at that time and from the New York Times, um, they had been work covering the community law center's work around children in prison. And they contacted me to say, do you know that um, your friend, your colleague has been murdered? And I hadn't found out yet. Um, I came back um, almost immediately here and um, it was an emotional time for the country. Um, at that time, Amy, it was, Amy lost her life, but as well, um, some young men who we were working with as well lost their lives. So it, it, it was um, sort of difficult when we felt we were moving forward to see, see feel like things were moving backwards. What was most um, memorable for me was meeting her family, her mom, her dad, and um, the right away the empathy they showed for the other young men who were killed for the country. Um, we, just, we were, I was coming back to, um, to finish planning and host our first conference on juvenile justice, which was quite fitting, and we dedicated it to Amy. Um, we made that decision with Della to, to dedicate it to Amy. Her, her family were very pleased with that decision. And um, the next few weeks were spent um, talking about how we create a, a juvenile justice system that is um, restorative that's not punitive, that actually takes into account the past situations. Um, and this came um, in part from the experiences of what happened with Amy, of talking to her family and saying that these young men, while you know, they committed murder, what they did, the situation, the circumstances leading up to it should be considered. And so it played a, played a large role in the work that we were doing at the center and what still today is um, the law around dealing with young people who get in trouble. It wasn't, okay, we're going to sit in a room as bright minds and do our research and write a constitution. It was every day, let's go out, let's talk to everyone and see what they would like the country to look like, what they would like the laws to look like, what the constitution looked like. It, it was life-changing for me. I think it was life-changing for everyone that the Community Law Center touched. And um, the, it, was, um, it was also, you know, at the time we didn't realize how important what we were doing was. The, um, the children came together for five days to talk about their rights and at the end the executive committee of youth um, wrote the children's charter which has become an extremely important document not just in South Africa but around the world. Other countries have modeled it and um, my, my role essentially was helping to set up all of these, these events but the last night sitting in a hotel room about 3 a.m. with the, the young people as they um, dictated, I was just a typist, um, they wrote what they wanted and, you know, and their charter on, you know, for their rights. And we were absolutely thrilled when Mandela was inaugurated, he mentioned children as South Africa is one of the only countries 
I think the, maybe Australia, I'm the only country in the world that mentions children specifically in its constitution. That is because of the work at the Community Law Center, absolutely. Um, the work that the young people did and the work they did, absolutely. I think that these, these people, but especially Dalla, who embraced, um, you know, we now talk about very flippantly about non-racist, non-sexist South Africa, you know, and it's become a cliche. Everybody had that in their heart, but they wore it on their sleeve. It was sort of what we, it was, it was, it was done unabashedly. And um, in hindsight, we were, I was working, you know, I'm an American. It was like working with the George Washingtons, the Thomas Jeffersons. They are those people for this, for this country. Continue to, to do what you do so well, which is the research and the forward thinking about how to ensure the Constitution is protected now, you know, 20 plus years on, but also the, how young people can be part of that.